Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today marks the day that most women love and most men loathe. Valentine's Day. Although this day has become a commercial success, celebrated by countless people from around the world, some may say it's a poor excuse to pick a man's pocket every 14th of February. However, as I learned the hard way, it's a day a man better remember if he's in a relationship. And so, I figure if we cannot avoid Valentine's Day, we should at the very least know why we have such a day in the first place. On February 14th, the church commemorates St. Valentine, the martyr, a day in which the church encourages us to remember, but of course not in the materialistic way that the world does, far from it. The reason the church commemorates this day is because Valentine himself was a remarkable saint, an inspiration and role model, a man who risked his life and later lost it for his faith in Jesus. From what little is recorded about him, we gather that Valentine was a pastor and a physician who lived in Rome during the third century a time in which the church was being severely persecuted by the Roman Empire. Tradition tells us that on several occasions, the Roman authorities ordered him to cease preaching and teaching the Christian faith. Valentine refused. He knew he needed to obey God rather than man. He would have understood well our Lord's words to his disciples. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Adhering to these words, Valentine did not hide his faith but faithfully and boldly proclaimed it, shining the light of Christ into the darkness of this sinful world. For his bold proclamation of Christ crucified, Valentine was persecuted and imprisoned. However, tradition teaches us that Valentine made the most of his time in prison by sharing the gospel with his fellow prisoners and even with the guards. One popular tradition asserts that Valentine was brought before the Emperor Claudius. Yet instead of pleading his case with the Emperor, he spent the time trying to convert him. However, the Emperor hardened his heart and refused to listen and sentenced Valentine to be beaten by clubs and then beheaded. As he waited his execution, it is said that Valentine began to write messages of Christian love and encouragement to his brothers and sisters in Christ. Legend has it that one such letter was addressed to the jailer's daughter who showed kindness to him and was signed, Your Valentine. And so even in the face of death, Valentine would not allow the salt of his faith to lose its taste, but all the more proclaimed the gospel of Christ and in love encouraged his fellow Christians to remain steadfast in their faith and in the hope of their salvation. After Valentine was executed, his fame spread throughout the empire. His faithfulness and bold proclamation of the gospel inspired countless Christians during this time of persecution. And so to honor his memory, Christians began to follow his example by sending messages of Christian love and encouragement to each other, calling them Valentine's. And so the origins of Valentine's Day has really nothing to do with flowers and candy, jewelry, or even romance. But it was a day in which Christians encouraged one another with the gospel, sharing with each other the love of Christ and the love he calls on us to share with one another. A day in which Christians are to remember a man who was willing to lose his life for Christ Jesus because of his sure faith in the salvation that he had in him. 
Now, although the origin of this day had a completely different focus, it has now, of course, taken on a whole new secular meaning. In fact, the historical figure, Valentine, has basically been forgotten. Yet I suppose we shouldn't be surprised by this. After all, the real meaning behind this day wouldn't exactly be a moneymaker, would it? I doubt couples would be inclined to go to a fancy dinner to commemorate the beheading of a saint. I doubt there's much of a market for people buying expensive jewelry and chocolates to show their Christian love for one another. And I suppose Hallmark would have a difficult time selling cards that read, Happy St. Valentine's Martyrdom Day. And so like most of our Christian holy days, the world has secularized, commercialized, and even vandalized the feast of St. Valentine. But this should come as no surprise, since the sinful world finds our Christian beliefs and traditions to be utter foolishness, and therefore to be discarded of. St. Paul speaks of this in 1 Corinthians when he writes, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. As St. Paul states here, we shouldn't be surprised when the world twists and discards our beliefs and way of life, because the unbelieving world finds the very heart and foundation of our faith to be inconceivable, archaic, and irrational. They find Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross to be foolish because they cannot fathom its meaning or the need for it. They find the simple preaching of Christ crucified to be utter nonsense. And they cannot comprehend why so many people put their trust and faith in it. They find it foolish that a man like St. Valentine and countless others would freely lay down their life for their faith in Christ Jesus. And why so many people today are willing to follow their example and do the same. They find all of this to be foolish because, as St. Paul says, they are perishing. Perishing in unbelief and their blindness to and rejection of the truth of the gospel. Blinded by their unbelief, they fail to see that in Christ's crucifixion, the Son of God in flesh made atonement for the sin of the world. They fail to see that on the cross, Jesus took upon himself their sin, and exchange offers to them his righteousness and the gift of salvation. Because they fail to see this, they fail to understand that the reason why St. Valentine and the other martyrs gave up their earthly life for their faith in Jesus is because they knew they would be gaining eternal life with Jesus. St. Paul teaches us that the reason the world fails to understand the Christian faith and finds it to be foolish is because it's simply natural for sinful man to believe this way. 1 Corinthians 2 Verses 14 reads, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. As St. Paul teaches us, the Christian faith is unnatural to people because our very nature has been completely corrupted by sin. Because we are born sin, born spiritually blind, we are naturally inclined to reject the truth of God. Yet out of his great love and mercy, God would not leave his chosen in this natural state, but designed to rescue them from their spiritual blindness by sending his Holy Spirit through the preaching of his word to open their eyes to the truth. Paul writes, So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. These words teach us that our faith in God is a gift from God. The very reason we believe in Christ Jesus and the salvation we have in him is because we were blessed with the Holy Spirit 
who created this faith in us, who blessed us with spiritual eyes to see the power of the cross, who opened our hearts and minds to trust and embrace the love God has shown us in Christ Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we now understand the things freely given us by God and no longer see the word of the cross as folly, but as the power of God that saves us. And not only has the Spirit given us a heart to love God, but also a heart to love one another, a heart that should love and have pity on those who are perishing in their unbelief. We see this heart in St. Valentine. Out of Christian love, he ignored the threats of the Roman authorities and continued to preach the word of God so that people, by the power of God's word, would receive the Holy Spirit and come to saving faith. He didn't want his neighbors and loved ones to perish in their unbelief. And so he was willing to risk his life and eventually lose it in order to bring the life-giving word of God to them. And so, on this Valentine's Day, I pray that you take time to remember the actual St. Valentine, his faith and devotion to Christ Jesus, how he, out of love, encouraged others, and how he was able to shine the light of Christ into the darkness of this world. And let us pray that the Holy Spirit will strengthen our faith so that we may follow his example and imitate his faith. May the Spirit grant us a heart to share the love of Christ with one another and with the world and encourage each other to remain steadfast in our faith and in the hope of our salvation. Amen.